Hi, this is Jason, Chief Technical Analyst with Toro Alerts with your weekly market recap. Had another tough week in the markets with a lot of selling pressure across most sectors and most indices. So let's dive into the charts and see what we can uh, identify here. Starting out with the S&P 500. Uh, we've seen quite a bit of selling pressure uh, this week on the S&P, um, but it looks like we could be getting close to a possible uh, short-term bottom in the market. I'd probably be looking for something around uh, 350 to 365, right about where we're at right now. Uh, on the S&P 500, uh, we could definitely uh, bounce off of this level next week, or if we do sell off further, wouldn't expect too much more uh, movement to the downside before uh, establishing some some sort of a short-term floor uh, in that 350-360 range uh, for a possible bear market bounce from there. And then when we jump over the NASDAQ, uh, we're actually seeing um, what looks like it could be potential support at around the 269-270 level on the triple Qs. Uh, if we hold that, then we could see a possible bounce on the on the triple Qs there. Uh, if not, then we could be see some further selling pressure uh, to the downside and uh, probably the next target, uh, if we break that 269, 270 level, would be heading towards the top of uh, right before the COVID crash, which would put us around the 237, 238 on the triple Qs. And then taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're actually at the e, uh, key level here of support. Uh, on the industrials, uh, right around 296 is the level on the DIA, uh, and that puts us right at the top uh, before the COVID crash in 2020. So that seems like a, a pretty set, uh, solid level of support potentially for the industrials, so it wouldn't surprise me to see a possible bounce off that level. Um, but if we do break that as support and f fall further below the 296 level, uh, there could be quite a, bit, quite a bit more selling pressure to the downside, so we want to uh, have that 296 level as a pretty sharp stop uh, if we're doing any trades on the Dow Jones Industrial Average right now. And then take a look at Dow Jones Transports, uh, take a look at our weekly candlestick chart. Uh, it looks like we could be um, honing in on some support here right around the 12,300 level, roughly 12,400, uh, which would be uh, an anchored VWAP um, support level from the COVID lows on the transports. Uh, so we'll see if we can find some support going into next week around those levels there. And then when we take a look at our Russell 3000 chart, we talked about this for quite some time now, uh, talking about how this uh, center channel uh, would likely be an area of pause and some support, which it did materialize there. Uh, we got up to the 100 week average on the Russell 3000, but then rolled over uh, and fell right through that center channel now. So uh, now that we've kind of gone through that center channel, uh, our next level of support is coming up on this 200-week uh, moving average, which we're very close to, which would probably be around the 2070 level on the Russell 3000. Uh, that also would maybe suggest that that would be a, a, a place where we could bounce off of there uh, for a possible bear market rally. If that occurs, I'd probably expect a move to the upside to that center channel again, and then it would probably act as resistance and then roll over further from there. Uh, still thinking we get at least to this bottom channel on the Russell 3000. Uh, before we get anywhere near a, a, an actual bottom in the markets from this sell-off. Uh, so I think there's still more pain ahead, but uh, we could definitely see a bounce off that 200-week moving average on the Russell 3000. And then we take a look at our uh, Russell 1000, our large cap. Um, similar story here. I think we could uh, be looking at a possible bounce once we hit the 200-week moving average, which uh, on the IWB is about 195, 196. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that for a possible bounce uh, off the 200-week uh, on the large caps. And then when we take a look at small caps, um, we've been watching this uh, 173, 174 level uh, pretty closely. Uh, as if we broke down there, we were looking for a short, so I put a short on. Uh, once we broke that, made a little bit of money on that trade, but took it off as it's hard to say if we're gonna see a potential bounce here. We are up against uh, some anchored uh, VWAP resistance and support level at around 161. Uh, so there's a good chance that acts as support. And so, um, I guess I'd probably say I'm fairly neutral on small caps at the moment. Um, wouldn't probably get bullish unless we got above the 173.50 level again. Um, and if we do drop below that 160, 161 level uh, that's acting, that likely will act as support, then um, we'd probably be looking at uh, further downside to about the 144, 145 level on the IWM small caps. And when we take a look at our growth versus value chart, uh, we did see a, a small bounce this week in, uh, in growth outperforming value, but uh, the overall long trend, long term trend is still uh, value outperforming growth. Uh, and we are coming up uh, on this ratio chart, uh, just pushing up against that 200 week moving average. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if we roll over from there and go, go for, uh, lower on this chart or if we do actually get back above 
the 200 week moving average uh, on this ratio chart. And when we take a look at our sectors, uh, this is a uh, sector analysis taking a look at the last two weeks in the market. Uh, not a lot to be excited about as we can see. The best performing sector we're tracking here is gold, which is down 0.8%. Uh, we have zero sectors on the positive for the last two weeks of trading of all these sectors that we're tracking. Uh, the next best one is silver, which is also down 1. Uh, uh, down 1.2%. Uh, we're seeing lithium um, outperforming, uh, being just down 2.7, uh, solar, biotech, uh, emerging markets, uh, and the gold uh, miners all kind of being in the um, best performing but still down sectors over the last couple of weeks. So it's definitely been tough out there. Not a lot of uh, great opportunities, but uh, we do like to look at these sectors, even if they are down, uh, some possible identifiers for um, sectors that potentially could bounce. Uh, as soon as the uh, broader sell-offs are there. So I've got my got a close eye watching the biotech sector, looking at uh, solar, uh, lithium, um, and metals and miners. Uh, if we can get that going, uh, it's been a tough trade this year, but uh, we could be seeing some uh, opportunities to develop in the short term with gold and silver if that continues to uh, outperform on a relative basis. And then some of our weakest sectors on the week, uh, definitely was, uh, in the last couple weeks rather, was uh, the energy space. We saw a clear and definitive rollover in energy recently. Uh, so I got out of all my energy trades for the time being. And I'm actually looking to re-enter some of those trades. I still think energy is going to be a winner on the year. And I still think there's some more upside left in the energy space. Uh, but we've got a clear correction going on right now. And so I've, I'm watching those, those ETFs and those uh, sector charts really closely, uh, looking for some bottoms, uh, really looking for probably a, a pullback to the 200 week moving average on some of these energy sectors. Uh, and we'll be looking for that as a possible entry point uh, to get back in and buy the dip. Uh, in the energy sectors, I still think it's going to be a relative outperformer going forward. Uh, some of the other sectors we saw that have really uh, struggled over the last couple of weeks, we've seen steel, home builders, uh, fintech, semiconductors, metals and mining, um, cannabis sector, um, material space and utilities, uh, a lot of these things rolling over. So uh, energy and utilities specifically uh, were actually relative outperformers uh, recently, but they have rolled over as well. So that's been an interesting development uh, to keep an eye on. And then when we jump over to the XLE energy chart, as I said, I'm looking for a potential bottom at the 200 week moving average, which would probably put it around uh, somewhere between about 66 to 68, depending on how long it takes to get down there. Uh, but if we do get down to that 66 or 68 on the XLE, see a bounce off that 200 uh, day moving average, uh, I'll likely be looking to enter some trades, uh, not only on the sector itself, but also looking for some individual uh, energy stocks to, to get back into and look for some upside on those. And speaking of energy, when we jump over to the U.S. oil chart, we did see a uh, pretty significant uh, sell off in the U.S. Uh, prices of oil barrels. Uh, we started out the week uh, opening at about 120 a barrel and closed it down at 110. So still uh, I think in a bullish uptrend but a clear correction into the week on oil prices. Uh, I think as long as we're above uh, about the 107, 108 level uh, on oil um, then I think we're structurally still in a strong uptrend for the energy sector and for US oil and still likely heading long term. Uh, none of the uh, supply demand dynamics have really improved and we also have China that's uh, appearing to come back online after quite a bit of uh, tight lockdowns with COVID zero policy. So I think there's still a structural uptrend in place for energy and oil and we're likely to see higher prices uh, after this uh, brief correction that we're looking at in oil. Uh, we also saw a huge rollover in commodities this week. Uh, the commodity sector has been uh, one of the best spaces to be. Uh, on the year, um, but we saw a pretty strong candlestick uh, to the downside this last week and it did not hold support, which we would have probably been looking for at about 313.75. Uh, if it held support there, then I think that would have been a pretty bullish uh, signal that it was just a brief correction and likely to bounce off of that level, but we did close pretty convincingly below that level. And so until we get back above the 31370, 75 we'll call it, uh, on the commodity CRB index, um, then it's uh, kind of a wait and see situation, I think, on commodities as well. And then we look at our consumer discretionary versus consumer uh, staples chart. Uh, we've seen a pretty clear downtrend uh, and that's continued. And this week uh, was no different. We saw a candlestick to the downside, uh, representing that uh, people are becoming obviously more defensive and buying staple stocks over uh, discretionary, uh, which makes a lot of sense as obviously we've been in uh, quite a bit of a bear market recently. Uh, the next level we'll be looking for on that ratio chart 
to potentially find some support would be that 0.65 level. Uh, and we'll see if that could be a, a possible um, buying opportunity to maybe look for some consumer discretionary stocks uh, if we do see a clear bounce off that 0.65 level. And then when we take a look at the rest of the world, uh, the ticker is VEU on this chart. Uh, it's our all-world index minus US. And so uh, we did, did see a, a bit of a gap down on the weekly candlestick and some selling pressure uh, in the global markets as well. But when we jump over and look at it on a relative basis and look at emerging markets uh, compared to the S&P 500, we've actually seen a bit of an uptrend uh, on a relative basis. Uh, so basically the entire markets uh, are selling across globally but it looks like the global markets over the last few weeks have actually been selling off less than the U.S. And so we are starting to see some relative outperformance in emerging markets. And we'll want to see if that continues. Uh, if we see a clear break above this uh, 0.11 level line, uh, then that might tell us that the trend would uh, continue further to the upside. And there could be some uh, uh, developments um, coming out of the emerging markets where we might start seeing some relative outperformance there uh, continuing going forward. And then we look at our high yield corporate bonds divided by the traditional bonds, uh, IEF, so that's our 7 to 10 year. And we're seeing uh, still trading in, in a range. Uh, if we see a clear break below that 0.73 level, uh, then I think that would be a very big warning sign for further selling pressure to the downside and the broader markets. Uh, but we are still kind of stuck within this range here. So as long as we're uh, holding above that 0.73 level, uh, then I think that's a, a decent signal that um, we could be looking at a possible short-term bounce in the markets uh, as long as we're above that 0.73 level. And then we look at the uh, actual HYG ETF, the High Yield Corporate Bond chart. Uh, we've seen some interesting developments on that one. We've only seen this chart go below the 75, 10 we'll call it level, um, three times, and the third time just occurred this week. Uh, in the past two times, uh, when we saw the HYG drop below this level, uh, we saw a pretty significant sell-off. Uh, the first time was during the financial crisis, and we saw about a 57% drawdown in the S&P uh, during that period of time. And then we also saw it drop below this level uh, during the COVID crash, which represented about a 36% correction in the S&P. So, so far we're down about 22% in the S&P on this correction that we're currently going through, uh, but we did see that HYG break below that key level. Uh, so I think that is a definite warning sign as, uh, for further selling pressure to the downside and that we likely could be looking at uh, you know anything above uh, that 36 plus percent sell off in the S&P. So we likely have another uh, 10 to 20 percent further uh, uh, potential damage coming uh, in the S&P 500 before we see an actual bottom. So this HYG chart is definitely flashing some warning signals for me to, to be cautious uh, going forward and we likely have more selling pressure uh, ahead of us. And then we jump over and take a look at the gold chart we saw in our uh, relative sector uh, strength chart that uh, the gold and silver had relatively held up uh, compared to most sectors, but we can see that we still did have a, a down, uh, downtrend in both gold and silver for the week, um, but we're finished off at about 171.25 on gold. Uh, really not probably looking for much uh, trade opportunities until we at least get above, say, about 176, 177. And really the, the stronger, I think, breakout would be when we get above that 186 level on the GLD. Uh, and then on silver, uh, we look to be uh, bouncing off of that 200-day move or 200-week moving average, rather. And uh, that's looking like that's holding us pretty strong support. Uh, so this, if you're looking to potentially buy a dip, this could be a, a decent entry point in silver if you've got a long enough time horizon. Uh, but we're likely still going to be chopping around in a range until we see silver break above that 24-25 level. And then some interesting developments uh, in both the dollar and the interest rates. And this chart here uh, shows uh, Treasury protected um, bonds compared to tr traditional bonds. And this chart essentially, when it's going up and to the right, is telling us that inflation expectations are likely uh, going higher. And we've pretty much seen a pretty strong uptrend in this chart for quite some time. Uh, but we've seen a bit of a development this week where we did actually uh, drop down and kind of hit some potential support at this 115 level. So we'll see if we bounce off of that, but if we do see a break down below that 115 level, uh, then I think that's potentially showing that we might be seeing a short-term uh, top in interest rates, which would certainly not be what most people would expect as the Fed just raised at 75 basis points. Um, but we'll take a look at some of these other charts and we're definitely seeing some interesting developments that we'll want to see some follow through going into next week 
uh, that could potentially be signaling a short-term bounce in the markets if these continue. Uh, so we've seen in our, our DXY, our dollar chart, uh, we saw a pretty strong candlestick to the upside, but most of it gave uh, its gains back on the week. And so um, that potentially could be a, a short-term top in the dollar. So if we see the dollar roll over and fall below that 103.85 level, uh, then um, that could be a, a sign that the dollar's rolling over, at least in the short term, which could uh, give us some uh, support for a bear market rally. Uh, also, taking a look at our two year, uh, we got as high as about 3.45 on the week, uh, but it finished all the way back down to 3.185, and so we saw a, a pretty big pullback in the two year. Uh, same story over on the 10 year, we saw a pretty big break above uh, a key. Um, resistance level at the 3.3 level we'll call it uh, got quite a bit above that but then pulled all the way back and actually closed the week below that um, resistance and support level and so it's now uh, st still acting as resistance on the 10 year and as long as we do not get above that 3.27 level uh, then um, we might uh, be looking at a rollover uh, in the 10 year as well which could potentially be signaling a, a bit of a, a upside opportunity in this bear market for a potential bear market rally. Also seeing the same thing in the third year, uh, got all the way up to a key level we identified at the 3.47 level, um, to potentially act as resistance and it did and it fell back quite a bit, almost all the way down to the 3.225 level. Uh, so we're sitting about 3.284 on the 30 year. Uh, so seeing all these uh, interest rates of different time periods kind of roll over as well as the dollar this week, uh, if we continue to see follow through going into next week across the board, on these charts, then that uh, I think could potentially signal uh, an opportunity for a bear market uh, bounce coming forward. And then we did see some developments in our uh, yield curve. We um, had got below the zero line on that uh, a while back in uh, April, uh, but then rallied pretty nicely off of that and got above the zero line. We've gone all the way back down to the zero line and we literally touched it and then bounced up above. And so we're just above the zero line right now at 0.046%. And so uh, it's looking like there's a good chance we're going to roll over and end up back below that zero line, uh, which would definitely be a strong signal that uh, a recession is in front of us. Um, typically when we get below that zero line, it's a very strong indicator that recessions is coming in the future. We've already dropped below that. Uh, just very briefly, but I think there's a decent chance we get below that zero line and stay down there for a while. And then we take a look at our VIX. Uh, been very elevated over the last week or so, uh, well above the 30 mark. Anytime we're above 30 on the VIX, uh, that's typically, uh, usually that only occurs in um, selling pressure environments and bear markets, and we are above the 30. We did drop a bit this week. We started the week, uh, we started uh, Friday off at, at about 33 and then finished the week off uh, at about 31 on the VIX. But as long as we're above that 30 level, um, then I think it's definitely a, something to be cautious with. Um, but if we do see those rates and dollars continue, dollar charts continue to roll over, and then we see the VIX go into next week and get below the 30 line, if all those things line up, I think that could definitely spell a, a bear market bounce uh, coming in the, in the short term. And then we like to take a look at our put call ratio. We are above one, which is uh, con uh, considered to be elevated uh, put line protection in the markets. Uh, and so anytime we have a lot of uh, put line protection in the markets, that also could just uh, um, actually add fuel to the fire for a potential bear market rally because if you've got too many people going short buying protection and then we get that rally, we could ultimately have some short squeezes across the market. So we'll see how that shakes out next week. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up the week with Bitcoin. Take a look at the Bitcoin chart. Uh, Bitcoin has been no exception to the markets. It's actually uh, arguably had a worse week than uh, even the markets did. And we saw a pretty, pretty huge sell off. We started the week off at about 26,000 Bitcoin. And uh, we got about one day left on this weekly candlestick. And we are already down to about 18,300. Uh, we are approaching an interesting uh, possible support level though when we're looking at the uh, anchored VWAP from the 2018 lows on Bitcoin. Uh, that would suggest we've got some possible support right around the 17,800 to about 18,000 level. Uh, so I'm going to be watching that level really closely. I think there's a potential setup for a tactical trade on uh, Bitcoin and crypto uh, at large if we do see a bounce off of that level. So I'll be watching that closely uh, in the coming days. And if we do see a nice bounce off of, uh, we'll call it about 18,000, uh, there could be a nice uh, upside swing trade just for a, sh a quick short-term trade in 
the crypto space uh, for Bitcoin specifically, I'd probably be looking for uh, not much more of a rally to get up until about the 200 week moving average, uh, which would get us up to about 22,500 or so, uh, which would represent about a 20, 25% bounce if we can do that. So uh, if we get that in Bitcoin, decent chance some of the altcoins will pop too. And there could be some potential uh, short term trades if you're looking for some tactical opportunities. But still looking like there could be some more selling pressure going forward uh, in the crypto markets as well. So if you do look for those trades, make sure you've got some tight stop losses uh, and you're getting in and out with some tactical opportunities because uh, I think we're still structurally in a pretty pretty big bear market in the crypto space as well. Thanks for tuning in this week. Make sure to uh, download the Tor Alerts app on the App Store. We've got one for stocks and one for crypto. And we'll see you next week.